Hello everyone, and welcome to episode 3 of Burb Tales with the host, the Flying Bird. And, uh, yeah, I don't know who's edited this, but, uh, yeah, for those of you who don't know, there's like a three-week delay, and sometimes I'll have a long of this. Just depends on, uh, the editors, but ideally it's weekly. Uh, if it's not, it's not. And, uh, yeah. <laughs> Ooh, it's been a busy week, busy, busy week. It's, like... The last thing on Sunday I've got to do, I have, like, a checklist of things. Actually, besides meal prep. Meal prep's the last thing I want to do. And what a lot of people don't understand is that I've really tried this week just to do so much as possible because I'm starting a new job tomorrow. i got a promotion at my current job, so I'm starting there tomorrow, and I'm really nervous about those things where the real highlight of this week has been, like, my anxiety. My, my anxiety's been through the roof, really. Uh, but I've been, like, trying to pr- casually progress... Um, and, and trying to find things that I can talk about. I think last time, last week, uh, I ended the episode saying I'm going to focus on, like, changing beliefs and attitudes. Originally, I was thinking about, like, how I wanted to, like, speak to Bill about certain topics, uh, but decided that I wanted to focus more on my changing attitudes towards depression, realistically, uh, and just anxiety in general, because I used to be the kid that didn't believe in it, yet I had it so much. Which is like the most ironic thing. I remember Logan Paul got roasted for it years ago, where the like where the suicide forest was like a culmination. I don't know if my parents are too loud and they just like came in. If not, there'll be an awkward pause to edit out. Good luck, editor. But essentially, I remember when I was younger, people, especially when we like, oh, I'm anxious about. You know, will Tommy think I'm pretty? Will Graham Amity slam me five times across there? Will Paul Amity tag team me? Like, you should be like, that's so stupid. And like, they're all irrational. Like, get me hit by a bus tomorrow. Like, you know, when you like, I remember like in Australia, like your mom tells you, cross, when you cross the road, look left, look right, and then look up, and then look left, right, left, right. You just never cross the road because you have the irrational fear you're going to hit by a car. As you go out of there, you sort of stop looking and you go, let's walk in front. <laughs> but I remember I just didn't take it serious, and I tried to be a really positive purpose, uh, a purpose, I mean person, I leave that one, I want to be a positive purpose, maybe a porpoise, can I be a positive porpoise for everyone, oh, Mr. Dr. P.P. stands for positive porpoise, where I slowly understood what depression was, because for those of you who don't know, I've been, like, diagnosed with it so many times, um, like general disorder, just anxiety and like general depression disorders where like I sort of forget I have it because I, I don't think it's possible but when I look back at it I think the real source of it was I remember there's a couple like death is one of those things that I think a lot of people don't understand when you're young like I remember when I was like six or seven years old my dad's mum's sister died I remember visiting her but I didn't understand the concept and then the next death was my mum uh, godmother died uh, where what happened was that my mum was trying to ed- educate me about grief and like looking back on it I still don't even know who that person is it's like it sounds like a really harsh thing to say but like looking back and like I think I was maybe 8 or 9 I just didn't understand it and I remember like when my grandma died when I was like a 10, 10 years old and that was my first real spirit of depression because I just didn't have anyone. Like, I was really bullied as a child where I used to... I know it now seems ironic because I'm a bit of a bully myself, but I don't even think I'm bullied. It's like stirring the pot, as my friend says. But I remember, like, I just didn't have an outlet. And I just cried, and I just didn't want to do anything. I didn't want to go to soccer anymore. I didn't want to do sport. All I did was play Pokemon. <laughs> What's changed? <laughs> All I do is cry now. But I remember that, and I remember... I started acting out a little bit. I remember when I was in like year six, which is like 11 years old to the year after, uh, my grandfather got involved with the school for various like projects. Like he was like a really good volunteer because it's very mechanical. And I remember I've never received, like I remember a teacher told me like when I was 11 years old, and I'll never forget this is you actually, your grandfather speaks like speak, like thinks the world of you yet you don't behave that way. Why do you bring dishonor to his name? I was 11 years old. (laughs) I got punished. Like, I used to, like, what would be worse is I get bullied and then I acted out. And I think the school I went to, my dad sort of describes as, like, 
they were very like, oh, you know, James did this wrong, did this wrong. I just always got punished for it because I was a kid that could could be punished. And I know that sounds really weird to some people, but I definitely think that if you're someone who reforms behavior, you get picked on a lot more because they think that like they can reform you, and then like it feel, makes like it's a feel good story. I remember like. When I was in year seven in high school as well, I was the same. I used to get in trouble all the time. I was hanging around with people. It's no one's fault. It was just the way of catching the bus home. It was like survival to have friends. But I remember that it really depression, you know, and I remember I was like year seven. I was just starting trying to fit in. I didn't do much. Then year eight, I remember my grandfather died halfway through the year or like early that year. And... I just still don't know how that sits with me. And it's scary to think of it like that. Because I couldn't tell you what he looked like as much as I used to. Because I realized like the other day that it's like nearly been, you know, seven or eight years now. But it's scary to think that like you can't recognize the face of someone you once loved like that. But like... Or not, like, recognized, but, like, you can't mentally picture them anymore. And then I remember, like, I got counseling for it. I remember my my best, one of my best friends, who I'm still friends with now and I barely see, you know, he was really, like, respectful about things. But, you know, I started acting out more at school because, like, I just didn't know how to deal with it. And then, like, year nine, everything changed because I had, like, more friends. But, yeah, so I slowly kept looking at things like that yeah but i remember and then like my depression just didn't exist for like two years i just kept studying you know i tried to make friends because i'm like i was so uncomfortable with being alone i think for me it's always been like even now i'm like trying to like debating on do i need to re- like redelete social medias do i need to do this or do i need to do that um but yeah i think i just became so reliant on other people to tell me how to feel and like the positive and negative validation and it all really like it went down hill 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 i think it was like the middle of year 11 we had this girl's birthday and the girl i had a crush on for years i wanted to ask her out i went downhill so quickly that i just never recovered i was broken after that i still still am broken to a degree like, it's such a formative part of my life that I don't remember why. I barely remember anything on. Like, I've gotten on with my life. I've done so much more. But, like, it's just that longing. I think I spoke about in episode one where, like, my ultimate goal was, like, 22, have a kid. You know, 23, like, start something down with life. And, like, I remember, like, I used to think, like, she would be, like, the perfect partner. And it, nothing ever materialized because of that. Um, and, you know, her friends still hate me. She still hates me. Um, but you know, I saw her a year ago, that was the last time I saw her, and I'm glad that I just didn't bother, and I, like, it still hurts to think that you are your own worst enemy at times, and I definitely am one of those people, because I just couldn't, like, I either get depressed or I act down, whether that's, like, trolling, cyberbullying, um, you know, antisocial behavior, um, weird flexes to make, like, belittling people, like, and it's because I'm just not happy with me. And it's, well, something's going wrong in my life. And I feel like I hate it, but I think the best way to look at it is, like, this volcano theory. I just let shit boil in the like, in the chasm of me. And the reason, one of the reasons why I know that, like, I don't go out things, uh, what happens is I just don't have my viewpoints like I used to anymore. And, like, I, I try to avoid some social settings. Like, I think I'm becoming more and more antisocial because I'm trying to make sure that it's just someone, like, that I like myself. So sometimes what I do is I just, like, I will literally go to the, uh, but like, I just think I get so reliant on other people to, like, tell me how to feel. And it comes back to, like, you know, it's why, like, over the last month or so, like, I've stopped, like, socializing. Like, I don't jump into Discord calls. Like, literally, at the moment, all I do is I get home from work, go to the gym, maybe jump into Discord call for, like, five, ten minutes, then go home, go to bed, do the same thing over and over again. 
I can barely talk to people anymore, uh, mainly because I'm trying to make sure, you know, that, like, I'm having fun with my life uh, because I just hate not having fun, which sounds really dumb, but it just is what it is. But I just know that I'm trying to work on someone that doesn't exist yet. And I know that a lot of people will be like, oh, you should have fun with your friends and you should do things. So a good example of this is someone said to me, they said, oh, you know, you've got to make sure you spend money on yourself just and buy things you enjoy. So today I went out because I've, I'm now like, I think like my, my, my second job boss where I normally work weekends was like, I think it's nearly time for you to move on because you're too good at what you do here. I, you don't deserve the money I pay you. You know, it's not good for me because like what you do in a day here is like great, but like I want it the full time and like, it's a mismatch of expectations. But I was like, Today, I was like, stuff it. I was going to go out and buy things that I've had on my wish list for a while. And, like, I bought a really nice, like, suit. Uh, but, you know, it's just always hard because you don't know uh, what's going on. So, you know, it's it's always hard, hard to know what's going on. Um, you know, like, it's, I don't, it's just don't know anymore. Like, I just, I bought things that are nice, and then, like, people, like, there's this great quote I remember on Instagram, like, I see it on Instagram, because, like, when Instagram didn't have reels, oh, fuck, I hate reels. Instagram reels, like, killed Instagram for me. But, you know, someone once puts up, you know, people tell you not to buy a Lamborghini, but you like Lamborghini. So you buy a Lamborghini, you're like, I look, I, I like a Lamborghini, I bought a Lamborghini. You buy a blue Lamborghini, because blue's your favorite color, and then someone's there, like, oh, it's not impressed with it, because it's not a red Lamborghini, you feel shit. Should have bought a red Lamborghini. You're so stupid. Or like, you know, your friend tells you should have brought like a, you know, a like a red Mustang. You're like, oh, should maybe I should have. And it's like you just don't do things that you enjoy because you're so worried about what everyone else thinks. And like that's like sums me up so much. I fucking hate that. Do things that I don't enjoy, you know. But I keep grinding because I know that like the person that I want to be doesn't exist yet. I know that like. To be that person that, like, is enjoying life. I'm going to have to work really, really hard to do. And, like, I I genuinely think I don't work hard enough. Yet people say, like, oh, you work so hard. I'm like, no, I don't. I really don't. I just go to the gym. I do the bare minimum, you know, that I need to do to feel good about myself. You know, I keep hitting PBs every day, which is what I want to do. And then after that as well, you know, I realistically should be making time to edit this podcast myself and not, like, getting someone else to. Because then when other people, like, edit it, then, like, it doesn't get done. I get so mad. And, like, I shouldn't be mad at my friends. Um, you know, like, I should be, I should be, like, doing these things myself and enjoying these things. And, like, focusing on the process that people talk about. But I just don't. And it just drives me shitless. And I hate it sometimes. You know, like, I've been reading more. Like, I've started, you know, like, all, like, all these CEOs talk about is they read, they do this, they do that. And so I've started doing that more. Um, goodness me, come on, microphone. Stay there, stay there, Blue Yeti. No, Blue Snowball, I don't know, a Yeti, a little snowball. No, stay in the thing, you stupid thing. But, like, I hate that I rely on other people to do things. And maybe I should do it myself, but I just don't have the time. Maybe that's an excuse. Maybe I should do everything myself. Like, maybe I should, like, spend 30 hours a week just doing every little thing myself. But then I know that, like, I'm going to miss other opportunities in my life. Like... I, I miss so much already, like, my mates will be like, oh, do you want to go to a pub? I'm like, no, because I don't like certain people that are dickheads. I'd rather, I'd rather, like, save my time, and, like, maybe every time I go to the pub, I might spend, like, 10 bucks, but I'd rather save that for internet. Or, like, here's something that I realized this year, is next year, one of the things I really want to do is go to the Melbourne Comedy Festival. Like, period. I realized that I've been saying since I'm 16 years old that I want to see some of my favorite comedians. I still haven't yet. And originally it was because a lot of their gig lists are for 18 plus. But now they're not. I'm older than 18. So why haven't I seen them yet? Like, I love people like Neil Kohatka. I love um, Friendly Geordies. I love Lewis Spears. I actually bought Lewis Spears special. I thought, man, why didn't I see this live? Because it was a special you could have bought tickets for um, to see in Sydney. And I love his comedy. Like, he is probably one of my favorite comedians I've ever, like, I, I watch so much of his job, jokes, because he's he just, like, you know when 
comedian's humor just like suits you. Like people be like, oh, I love Dave, Ch- Dave Chappelle. He's so funny. It's like yeah, everyone fucking loves Dave Chappelle. Like there's n- like except the people that get triggered by him. Like Dave Chappelle. Like you can watch Dave Chappelle like uh, show uh, videos on like on YouTube, and the top comment is always, "Why'd you let Dave Chappelle go? He was the goat." And they're like, "Well, we didn't really let him go. We need to go back to Africa." And he talks about how, like, cultural identity is something that, like, undermined his, like, desire to go back and uh, cultural understanding and awareness because he talks about that it was so easy to walk him for him to walk away from $50 million like it was nothing because people started laughing at his jokes based off race rather than laughing at the jokes themselves. So, like, a really good example of that skit is the Negro family, uh, where, if you don't know, uh, the Dave Chappelle show... Uh, portrays a white family as the uh, nigger family, where the white people, uh, you know, like there's they have a black butler and it's set in like the 1920s to give that feel of like you know back in this time when you made skits and comedy it was fine it was acceptable, but now it's not and just the absurdity absurdity of it, you know, and like this great skit part where like the milkman uh, and his wife go out to dinner and they go, you know, we want to eat in this restaurant and they're like, oh, I don't know. And then the family, like, son and his date rock up behind, like, oh, two niggas, yeah, we'll get two niggas uh, a seat over here. And he's, and the wife's like, oh, why would you, why would you tell me about them? And then she goes, so these are the, the two lazy niggas you're telling me about work? And he's like, no, not those niggas. And it's just so good, but there's so many Dave Chappelle bits that just so satirical, it takes a joke out of himself, and, like, it, everyone resonates with that, but, like, Lewis Spears, to me, is that person. I, I just resonate so much with this comment. I used to think it was Jeff, Jim Jeffries, but he got so exposed by Avi Yamini. I don't think you can respect that anymore. Like, I think D- Jim Jeffries had a lot of good jokes, but I think, like, Shooter Williamson and, like, how he collabed, they collabed for that movie, they've sort of crashed and burned a little bit. Shooter is just because Shooter's Shooter, like, Alex Shooter Williamson, his comedy is so bogan, but God, it's so funny. Like, some of the stuff he says is just so absurd. Like, uh, he was doing this uh, podcast, uh, The Luke and Lewis Show, and he just talks about how, like, his girlfriend started the OnlyFans, and he was so proud of her for getting a job. I was, like, in tears. I was at work. I'm like, this is too funny. Like, imagine, you know, because she always was like, yeah, nah, we were pretty good. You know, uh, it was the 16th birthday yesterday. <laughs> And like he's just he's just so off the cuff. Like he's just constantly in character. He's just like I remember Lewis asked uh no Luke asked him uh, and how do how do you how do people react when you find out your girlfriend's an OnlyFans account? And he's like, Well I'd normally pay you for it and then I heard him do an interview with uh, uh what's his name? Frenchie and Tom from the Roundabout crew, where he talks about how like he wants to ideally he thinks the ultimate troll would be at some stage because uh Tom, Tom, Tom Armstrong asked him, well, would you, what would you ever appear in your only fan, like make your own only fans account? He goes, no, I think it'd be so much funnier to be Gabby's only fans. I'm like, show a dick pic. <laughs> I was like, that's hilarious. But yeah, no, definitely Lewis Spears to me. is just such a great comic. I was watching his uh, latest video about how like this like free form, long form podcast is something I really like where he talks about you know, the reality TV show that is America and that, you know, they're going to vote, they're going to vote out the uh, main protagonist. It's just like in tears. He's just too good. And I, and I think to myself, why do I deprive myself of seeing him? Like, he's just amazing. I just love his stuff. And I just thought, you know, you're not going to watch him on TV. He, he's even admitted he's never going to be on TV unless it's on a current affair because he's trolled, you know, like, the Shinnan and Tracy, but why do I deprive myself of that? Like, I really enjoy that. You know, I miss, like, playing soccer with my mates, but the reality is I'm always, like, forgotten about, and I'm happy to admit that, like, I'm forgotten about, and it doesn't, like, affect me like it used to. Now I just go to work, and I enjoy work, and get paid to, like, talk to my friends at work, which is kind of ironic when you think about it, but it is what it is. Money is money. Ho, 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 ho. You know, like... I think a lot of people get mad when they get left out of things. But, like, my viewpoint has always been this. If people leave you out, yes, they like, they may talk about, like, a good a good time that they've had. 
but you just need to make sure that you've had a better time than them. So what happens then is like, I'll give you a good example. Um, my mate was telling me, you know, like, well, what happens is, I remember one time my mate was like, oh, we had a really good night. Um, we went out, we got clubbing, we got absolutely shit face, spent like hundreds of dollars. And that night, I remember I was at home. Uh, I got in a Discord call with one of my best friends. I think it was maybe like, I can't remember who it was at the time. And we just laughed for hours. And I thought, do I really miss that clubbing experience? And then like, I remember I thought, well, maybe it's the hookup scene. Maybe like the me that was like, I'm going to meet the perfect girl. And like, I used to, I remember like I got re- when I got rejected, I used to remember like and think back about, well, I got rejected, but as like when I was like 16 you know, but I always thought there was like this great Indian story where this girl rejects a guy because he's not good enough and then like 10 years later on there's like the high school reunion and the girl's like oh where's so and so where's Ravi and like oh Ravi couldn't make it tonight she's like oh did he die Whole lot, like no one would care about him and they're like no he's just like the biggest CEO and like I know it's like fictional but and he like has a boat and he's named it after I don't know, fucking Jasmine, we'll call her Jasmine, and he's like, Ravi's like, and she's like, oh, well, Ravi's not here, but why would he never boat after me? And he's like, well, he did this all to impress you. He impresses, and she's like, no, because she could have taken me to the ball. And it's like, fucking hell, Jasmine, did you, you didn't like him, you never liked him, because well, he was a loser. And then Ravi shows up, and everyone's like, oh, Ravi, like, it's amazing to see you. And like, they're like, I can't believe you took time. He's like, yeah, yeah, look, I'm so sorry I'm late. Uh, my wife is, like, in labor. I'm going to have a kid. And, like, Jasmine just, like, cries. I was like, that's a fucking ultimate revenge story. You know, imagine, imagine that. Imagine, like, you just go back and all those cunts that hated you and said you would never make it. Like, I think about there's this guy I went to school with that now is, like, plays in the NRL. I remember at the time I once said he'll never make it. He was just only picked because his dad's the coach. The fuck is now playing in a real? I just hate that sometimes. I hate that, like, I thought so negatively of someone, someone just because of, like, my personal indifference with him. Like, he's never a bad guy. I just didn't like him. And, you know, it's still a very harsh comment to say about someone. And he probably has it in, like, the David Goggins think jar, where, like, he probably pulls it out at times and says, fuck you, cunt. I just kicked a goal and scored more points than you'll ever score in the NRL, and you're a fucking loser. And he's got a point. Cause I'm a fucking loser. But, Oh my goodness, my fucking nose. Maybe it's Corona. Maybe it is Corona. I got two weeks holiday. But uh, yeah, what I what I think about is I'm like, what what I want to do is the more and more I get on with my life, is that I want to like make sure that I don't have those moments. Um, so what we want to do is. I want to make sure that the moments I have is like enjoyable. I want to like laugh. I want to have fun. I want to like enjoy my life. I think that like for me, the Melbourne Comedy Festival will be such an experience. I'm like, fuck, I'm just going to like save up annual leave. If I can go to Victoria, you fucking hot spot. Uh, but maybe that's something too. I mean, like you never know who you'll meet there. And I remember I really was struggling at one stage because I just didn't have friends off the internet. And Jimmy said, why don't you start doing things that you don't know if you're going to make a friend out of? But if he was like, if you think about it rationally, people that are friends normally do things that they like together. And it's sort of weird, but he's the fuck is right. Uh, because at the gym now, there's like a couple of, because like, I go to the gym so often, you just see people over and over again. And you just say, and like, the thing I love about the gym is like the gym to me is like one of the few places where people are equal. So there's this guy at the gym. His name's Paddy, and Paddy's a freak. He he scored a two hundred Friday night, and uh, I was there. And we all clapped him on because fuck two hundred is a massive thing. His brother's there, and his brother is like just signed out. He works like in the same complex I do. So I went and said hello to him on Saturday. They're like yesterday, we had a bit of a chat, had a laugh, and he we like I've made so many friends at the gym, and even if they're just casual acquaintances, like. It's so much more positive going to the gym. And then, like, you know, it's something that other people, like, have in the community. Like, people like Max, people like Bav, people like Marody, people like Graham, people like Brian. And you just have those friends where you can just, like, start talking about things that 
aren't like your primary hobby or what your connection is because that shit gets boring. Like, I don't know how people talk about Pokemon viability 24 7. I totally talk about it 23 26. Uh, so, yeah, that's longer, but yeah, fuck it. Fuck maths. I'm not a maths teacher. But, oh my fucking nose. I've got to hate this. I need to get this fucking fixed. The old snores. But yeah, so for me, it's all about just having fun. And then, like, why do I deprive myself of this? And so, like, I made friends because of that. And then the people at my, because I'm transferring sites as part of my promotion. The thing that a lot of us had in common was we're all just young people that just didn't have a fucking clue what was going on in life. And we just all, like, want to talk, discuss different things. So one of the girls at work, who's a goat, uh, she calls her called Safara, I don't know why. She's like, you won't be able to pronounce my name. And then I pronounce it every day correctly. And she's like, I fucking hate you. I'm like, they don't call me the king for nothing. But, like, we just had an interest in, like, emotional intelligence and how, like, emotion like being able to regulate your emotions is such a powerful thing and like that's one of the things that depression changed me like this this one of the best uh psychologists i had because i've had so many falling in and out of psychologists one of the problem with the reasons why like i should realistically be seeing psychiatric help but i don't said to me she's like it's like leaves on a stream it's like it's just a thought you can acknowledge it and move on just don't let it fucking take up your life if i can blow my nose my fucking nose hurts <laughs> Sorry, my nose was killing me. Whoever has to edit that, I feel sorry for you, but fuck them. I paid money for this. <laughs> but yeah, so like, she was like, you just acknowledge those feelings and move on with it. And if you can't move on with it, that's when it's an issue. And she was right, because when we slowly figured out I could move on from these issues, it became so much more enjoyable. I had fun. Like, it's just a great feeling. And then like, I, I just want to make those, like, little, like, sad bumps less. Like, today was a great day. I did something I didn't normally do. I've been saving a bit of money, so I went and bought some clothes. And, you know, like, as I said, people make fun of you for it. But, like, I just look at my wardrobe and I'm like, I'm slowly beginning to really like the things I like. I buy. And I think I have, quote-unquote, good taste. And the reason I have, quote-unquote, good taste is because I consistently just work on like understanding fashion and i just think well who's someone that looks like dresses good and then like for example like guys you need clothes of goat and like it was really weird so i was with ira one day at work um and we went to, to uniqlo after work and she was like to me she's like yeah i really like this stuff like sometimes i switch out my boyfriend's closet with these stuff and i was like that's so funny and then like i thought that's what dog does for me it's a similar concept, except he's a friend. Oh, friend, friend, friend. But I was like, it's a good thing. I remember one of the, like, when I started, one of the reasons, like, God, you know how girls get, like, triggered when oh, well, you wear the same dress as me, especially when they're younger, and that's, like, because they want to be an individual and, like, fuck 50 dudes in Greece and, like, have a fucking Greek kebab. Like, and call it. And then when they go to Turkey, it's a Turkish delight. Uh, filled with goodness. Oh my goodness. Oh my goodness. I'm so bad at recording, but it's funny when it's just like this and it's free form podcasting. Leave that in, obviously. But I was like, I remember one of the guys at work, we, you know, because we had a similar dress style, that was something that we started talking about. And it's just slowly over time, what you realize is that you, you, you just want to invest in you. You don't, you don't, care about what everyone else does like i'm much happier with the person i am now than the person i was at the start of the year um and then i'm even more proud of the person i was last year last year so like a good metric for that is that i'm slowly filling out like like i'm slowly filling out shirts so i don't look like a fucking was that people at like my job are like complimenting like oh you slow and i like i've gone from like this really slim you know fucking anorexic chick Build to like this, I'm slowly beginning to develop muscle. Like if you can call it muscle, I get roasted if I say, oh, you sort of proud of what he does. It's like, yeah, that's right. I, I am sort of proud of what I do. But what people don't understand is that like, I'm so proud because like every time I go to the gym now, like I'm setting a new PB. Like I remember discussing and someone said to me the other day, said, oh, are you mad that you didn't max a PB? I said, yeah. I was, like, one short of benching 60 kilos, which is, like, a, I don't know what the fuck it is. Figure out, because you can, like, leave a comment 
down below when you figure out the calculation for me. Or like whoever edits this can like just leave it in the comments. But they said, oh, are you mad you failed 60 kilos? I said, no. I remember the first day I benched and I was like 16, like 17 years old. I couldn't even like lift the pet bar properly. <laughs> and my mates roasted me for it. My mate, I remember one of my mates said to me, he said, I wish I recorded you benching because that was one of the worst benches I've ever seen. And you're the ugliest person I've ever seen bench as well. And I, he was pretty right. But we worked over and over time. And I sometimes feel bad that these people that were in my formative years, I just don't see anymore. Uh, but I really want to make sure that, like, I want to do something. And I want to focus on me and just have a bit of fun and, like, have a bit of a laugh and just enjoy life a bit. Because, as I said to everyone, you just don't know how much time you got left. And... I remember there was a movie that came out and like, I remember this movie because it was like the rich people could buy more time to live and the other people were like, imagine if you knew when you were going to die, how would that change you? And then there used to be a song I loved by, and I'm pretty sure it was Smokey. Let me see if I can find it. Fuck it. If I get copyrighted for playing it, it's such a good song. What would you do if today, what would you do if today was your last day? Hey, uh, Pegs. Um, yeah, Pegs, what would happen if today was your last day? And I remember I listened to a Stephen Barlett interview one time, and he said, if today was my last day on Earth, all I would do is work for the company to make sure that I don't leave him in dire straits. And it's one of the worst things I hate about myself, but it's also one of the most true things. And I agree with him so much that, like, if it's, I knew today was my last day, I'd make sure that, like, I was on the right track and I was helping as many people as possible or just enjoying life because... I remember when I was reading The Happiness Project, they talk about how there's this guy called Beefy, and he isn't allowed to play sport because he's just shit. But he's, he's just, I think he's like physically handicapped or mentally handicapped, but all he talks about is Collingwood. He's like, I love Collingwood, 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 Collingwood. And, the, and this guy that writes the book says, oh, you know, it's Australian cricketer. And he goes, the beefy kid goes to, mate, you say you love cricket and you, you're you happy with losing. Mate, you don't know what to do to get on the field. How about you fucking win for a change? And I'm like, oh, it's got a point, Mr. Beefy. And I think each day, like, I'm slowly getting better at things. I'm slowly getting better at, like, emotional intelligence. So I'm going to read more about it. I'm slowly getting better at understanding what my motivations are. I'm slowly getting more... But getting better at like understanding that I might be like lonely till I'm 70 years old and maybe I then have like might be in a nursing home and like find the girl of my dreams maybe I don't want to find the girl of my dreams maybe she'll find me or maybe what will happen is that like it's all this what the fuck ifs and you're never going to be happy if all you worry about is what the fuck will happen if this happens because realistically you shouldn't your happiness shouldn't be the dependent variable on like these random life goals like I was, I was funny because where dog has really helped is dog gives me these like little things. He's like, how do you want to perceive be perceived at your current? Like if you had to go out today on the street, how do you want to be perceived? And it's like, wear this or wear that. No, don't do this. Don't do that. And it's like really helpful. And then there's like, for me, oh, it's weird. I, I said this phrase to someone about like, you have all these capitals like values where like you have like your human capital which is like how much you like put into a business or you have like your social capital and one of the guys in my work uh loved the idea of it because i said well you gotta raise your social capital you know you you, you don't want a reputation of being late not dressing professionally if you want to be here long term because one of the girls in my other job was telling me like oh i don't get enough shifts but you get more shifts than i do and you only work weekends i'm like yeah because i worked my way up to be such a fucking god in that place that, like, them telling me to move on is, like, you're too good for us, but fuck, you're a good cunt. So, what I want to do in that regard... Sorry, people are just so loud outside my door. It's just so distracting. This will be a shorter podcast, but I promise next week it'll be better. Um, is that I just want people to understand that, like, I'm just going to work on me. I, I know that people won't ultimately perceive me in the best or, like, worst light, but I'm just going to slowly work on it. I'm going to try to work, write a finance article each week. I'm going to try to... I'm not going to share them on us because I write them like really specifically for myself. Um, I'm going to try to make record the podcast each week. I'm going to make sure I'm like working out. I'm going to make sure that I'm taking like photos of how my body is developing each workout. Maybe not every, every workout, but maybe every second workout, maybe every third workout. 
and I just want to see their progress. Like my my main goal is that like going into September, I want to track every meal I eat, and I'm gonna like I I work down as well today that retail therapy for me is like so much better than like food therapy because I fucking hate uh, goals that conflict with them. So if, like I want to look well, I can't be eating shit. Like like I I bought pie face. I did uh, I bought grilled. I bought. Uh, you know, I bought, what else did I buy this week? You know, yesterday I bought, you know, so what I want, what I'm saying to myself is that if I can track every meal in September and like I eat well, I'll probably buy myself an Apple watch or I'll buy myself, um, some more like clothes to like keep looking better and keep raising that social capital because, um, I don't want to go to the stage where like net worth is fine and like monetary capital is great but i don't have any social capital or i don't have any human capital i just fucking burn out and die because i definitely think that i do burn out myself a lot and there's like for so such arbitrary reasons i think that's why i get depressed is i just i'm just like oh, i'm not doing anything but i look back at myself like one month two months three months four months five months six months i'm like how the fuck did i progress so much and why the fuck am i so depressed it's because I can't pat myself on the back, and that's what fucking kills me. I think other people get in the same rut. You need to understand that if each day if you're depressed, set yourself a little goal. I don't care what it is. You know, if you're depressed because you're overweight, go for a walk each day. If you're depressed because you don't have any friends, figure out what you like about yourself, and maybe find find reasons why your friends that you currently talk to think you're a great friend, but you don't recognize that. Maybe if the thing that annoys you is that each day you're depressed because you don't have, you don't like look after yourself. Take that day to just do some admin on yourself. Do some worry about your own being. Make sure your spirit's doing well. Like I, I realized that like I pissed away, uh, you know, formative years of me being a, you know, a, a smart individual. I, I don't have a mentor. I'm not gonna fucking suck myself off. But I'm gonna go back and do a masters because to me everyone has a bachelor's degree. This day, masters are harder and harder to do. I'm gonna go back and do a masters degree. I'm not going to impede, but I'm going to prove to myself that I'm a very smart individual by reading more. I think people that read are very intelligent, whether it's snippets, whether it's articles, being able to recite and verbalize information that's highly technical to lay individuals is quite impressive to do so. So I want to work on that. Um, you know, I, I think to myself, like, there's people I know that I used to get so mad at myself because I, that I'd have mentors and I'd ask my mentors questions like, I read this, do you agree with this? Like, oh, no, you, you, that's, like, discredited because source B tells you that this. So I read source A, B, C, D, E, F, G, and then, like, come to my own conclusions. And, like, one of the biggest own conclusions I've come up with myself recently is that percentage swings are based on capital, based off, for example, how much money you have. If you earn more than, like, a 5% swing, then it's not really invested money yet. And it's going to seem a lot like, because realistically stocks just change every day. Property goes up and down over time, but it's going to be a large enough swing that you can go, oh, what I can do is look at this like 10 years on, you know, like I bought my, I remember like today, like I, I was just like, I want to get to this stage in my life where I'm happy to do so. I need to focus on these things. And that's one of the reasons why, like I'm changing my attitude on depression because I've d what I realized is, I used to think depression was an isolated, like, isolated incident. I was the only person, and whoa, mic drop. Like, I used to believe that like, I was the only person depressed, but I've slowly realized as time and time goes on, more and more people are depressed. They just don't want to admit they're depressed, or they just don't know how to address it. And people address it in negative ways. And one of the best like things that Zazo uh, ever told me, who was one of the best mentors, and I fucking miss, and I, if he listens to this, I hope he knows he's a fucking goat is that I was using escapism as an excuse. I was playing video games all day. I was watching YouTube. I wasn't doing things that I enjoyed. Like, I enjoy making content in the regards of me, like, being recording and then, like, seeing what people think. And it pisses me off sometimes when I, like, rely on people to do so. But to do it, I need to understand that in five, six years' time, you know, it's going to be great. You know, one of my one of my uh, bosses was telling me that he said, "Look, I took a less paying job so I could be a, be a dad for a couple of years. And there's nothing more I enjoy more in this life." I was like, "That's fucking sick." <laughs> and I think depression to me is something that 
is so many people like experience. It's just how much it controls you. And I want to get to the stage where it doesn't control me. And I think I'm getting better and better at it. Slowly not controlling me, but it slowly still does. And I think the only way to keep going forward is working on me. And who knows, maybe two, three years down the line, I'll be happy with myself again. But until then, I'm not going to worry about it. I think next week, I'm going to talk about the gym and why I like the gym, why the gym's been my favorite thing in post-COVID. Make sure if you have enjoyed to leave a like and comment down below in this first episode, catch up. And as always, thank you so much for listening and have a lovely day. Bye. Actually, no, catch you next week. Bye.